welcome back to my channel. Before we get into today's video, there are two things that I want to tell you about. One is that I have started a Patreon and the link for that will be down below in my description box. Clearly, obviously, there is no pressure whatsoever. There's no expectation whatsoever. But I have had quite a few people ask me, especially during live streams, whether or not I have a Patreon. And now I can say that I do. So there are different tiers and all that kind of stuff in there. If you're at all interested, go and check out the link and you will see more information there. The second thing is that I've designed some merch. I thought, why not, right? So as of right now, there are two different shirt options. One is substantially more wholesome than the other, but you know, to each their own. There's also um, stickers and a mug using my channel art, which was created by my friend Danica. You can follow her at Ferret and Mink on Instagram. I will put that up on the screen. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, again, it'll be linked down below and you can go and check that out. But having said that, let's get into today's video. Today, I'm just doing an update on my project pan, which I have called 40 by 40. I had gathered 40 items throughout my collection from hair care, skin care, and makeup, and I'm trying to use up as many of them as I can by my 40th birthday, which falls on June 9th. It is rapidly approaching. We're going to move on from there. Okay, so I have 12 items here to talk about that I've either hit pan on or completely finished up. I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown on those items. I'm making good headway. I have, I think, 18 items left in the project, so I'm going to keep working on them for the next few weeks. Whatever I don't finish, I don't finish, but I finished more than half of them, so I'm feeling pretty damn good about that. All right, now because I don't want this video to be like insanely long, I'm just going to dive straight into the products. There's no rhyme or reason to the order in which I'm doing this. I'm just grabbing and going. So on that note, First up is a face wash. This one is from Paracone MD. It is their Hypoallergenic Gentle Cleanser. I really did like this cleanser. It is very gentle. It doesn't aggravate your skin at all. It doesn't burn your eyes. It is a very nice cleanser. However, it's also very expensive. Now, I am not a skincare expert by any stretch. I do not profess to be whatsoever, but I just feel like a cleanser you don't necessarily have to spend that much money on because well at least the way I do it I've already removed my makeup and then I'm going in to cleanse with an actual cleanser which obviously just gets washed off so it's not like it's sinking into my skin or really doing anything particularly beneficial so for me I would rather invest my money in actual like skin care in terms of serums moisturizers that kind of thing rather than invest it again into something that is as pricey as this cleanser. Again, feel free in the comments to let me know if I'm off base on that. I very well could be, but that's just sort of my gut instinct. So for that reason, I don't think I would repurchase this again because I think if I recall correctly, it's like 50, $60 for this cleanser. Granted, the cleanser lasted a long time because you really don't need an awful lot, but it's still 50 or $60, where I could still probably get a cleanser that lasts just as long as this one, does just as good as a job, is just as gentle, but doesn't cost as much. If you have recommendations, let me know. All right, let's move on from there. The next one is a setting spray. This is from Gerard Cosmetics, and this is their Slay All Day Setting Spray in Mint Chocolate Chip. I really do like these setting sprays. I find that they really do lock in my makeup without making my skin feel sticky or tacky. There's nothing sort of luminescent in the setting spray, so you don't have to worry about like those little like white globs that sometimes arise when you use that kind of setting spray. And honestly, the scent is amazing. And their scents across the board are amazing. And what I really like about the way that they have formulated their scents is that if you buy one that is labeled coconut, it actually smells like coconut. If you buy the peach one, it smells like peach. I find sometimes, especially with like setting spray type deals, if you buy something that is supposed to smell like watermelon, it doesn't really smell like watermelon. Whereas with the Gerard Cosmetics setting sprays, what it's called is what you get, which is very helpful when you're ordering online. Okay, 
Next up, let's see here. This one is from Lush. This is the Snow Fairy Body Conditioner. And I have a confession to make. Um, I didn't read the instructions. And, and so for like the first three quarters of this, I was like, this is a really thick skin cream. Like this is, this is like taking moisturization to the next level. Um, because I didn't think I had to read instructions on a moisturizer, but apparently I did because it says smooth all over your wet skin after washing, then rinse clean. So for three quarters of this, I was just applying it after I showered, not rinsing it off and wondering why it seemed to kind of sit on the surface of my skin. I mean, it was very hydrating, but it certainly left a film and it's because I'm a dumbass and I didn't read the instructions. So once I read them, I was like, oh, all right then, so I put it in the shower. I don't like it in the shower, I don't. Yes, it is moisturizing, and yes, that moisture does last after you've toweled off. However, it made my shower like insanely slippery. Like, this should come with a warning. So I, I don't think I would buy this again for that reason. I didn't particularly like the smell of it. It was very heavily fragranced. It was like cloyingly sweet, but even if it was unscented, just from like the risk factor involved in it, I wouldn't buy it. Like, because not only is it slippery for me, but then my kids take a bath in the same tub and Bennett, he's three, he doesn't always understand the whole concept of like, hey, you're in the bath, can you maybe stay in a seated position? He likes to jump in the bathtub. Yes, my, my heart falls out of my stomach every time he does it, uh, but especially if it's extra slippery because of a product like this. So wasn't a big fan of that one. All right, moving on, I finished up a perfume. This one is from Jo Malone. It's obviously like a deluxe size sample. This was Wild Bluebell Cologne. I didn't like it. I, it wasn't bad. I mean, I got, I got through it. But this is what I really like about especially testers that are this size is that you really get to put it to the test and really see how it works with your body chemistry. Because this one, like just sniffing it straight from the bottle, I'm like, yeah, I like that. That's great. When I put it on, not so much. Also, it doesn't last very long, which on the one hand is kind of good because it's not overpowering and really strong. I just, I find it's a very heavy scent. Uh, but on the other hand, this stuff is like wildly expensive if you buy an actual bottle of it. And if I'm going to invest that much money, I would like for it to last longer on my skin. But this was a scent that I just, it just kind of got me at the back of the throat after a while. And I just found that it was just too heavy. So this one wasn't my favorite. Okay. An item that I have not completely finished up, but all I wanted to do was hit pan on is from Jouer, and this is their, I always forget the name of it, Soft Focus Hydrate and Set Powder. That's why I always forget the name of it, because it exceeds my three word rule. Names of products should like max out at three words. If you can't describe it in three words, try harder. Anyways, this one I have hit pan, and I have hit pan quite significantly on it, so I'm quite happy about that. This comes as good timing as well because my tan from Mexico has faded. It's not yet warm enough here that I'm spending a lot of time outside. And also when I'm going on runs because, hey, I run now. I don't know who I am, but I'm loving it. I do use like a facial SPF so that I'm not getting a ton of sun. So this one is just getting too dark to be used on its own. I kind of have to mix it with other setting powders. So at any rate, for now, I'm happy to just sort of return it to the drawer, wait for later on in the summer when I do naturally pick up more color, and then I'll bring it back out then. Another item that I've hit pan on but not finished completely is from ColourPop, and this is their highlighter in Flexitarian. So you can see that I have quite a good dip going on in there and have definitely hit pan on it. And the more I use this highlighter, the more I love it. It's what I'm wearing today. Now I did apply this, mm, gosh, what time is it? Three, probably a good five hours ago is when I applied this and it's still holding up strong. I really like this. I do wish that they offered the same amount of like impact in a regular pressed powder highlighter because I find that that would be a lot easier to use. 
But once you figure out like the right brush to use with this, then you're golden. For me, it is the number four from Refer. I just, I've, I've talked about this before. It is not a brush that I would ever use for highlighting, but I, for whatever reason, just picked it up and tried it one day and it worked perfectly. It picks the product up nicely, deposits it, yet blends it out so it's not just like really bright strips on my face. It just works perfectly with that highlighter. Next up are two lip products. So one is a lip pencil. This one was from Contour Beauty, sorry, Contour Cosmetics, and it is all done. I didn't enjoy this pencil. I would not repurchase. It just found that it tugged along my lips. It was very dry. It did crumble a few times. Like if you pull it up like beyond like half a centimeter above like the lip of the tube, I, words are failing me, um, then it tends to break off, I think because it's so dry and it tugs, but at any rate, it's not a formula that I enjoyed. A formula I did enjoy though was from MAC, and this is one of their satin lipsticks in the shade Brave. You can see I've used it right down to the very nub, but this is such a nice, pretty, mauve kind of shade. It goes with basically any eye look that I'm wearing, so it is one that I would consider repurchasing. I have a plethora of lipsticks at this point, so I'm not in a hurry. I think the next one that I wanna try from MAC is Chili, which is nothing like this one, but that's the shade that I'd like to get next. And I think, I think I'm very, very close to back to MAC status. Of course, the stores are all closed right now, but once they reopen, I should maybe be done my paint pot by then, so then I will have enough to do the back to back thing. All right, moving on. I finished up a daily moisturizer from The Ordinary. This is their Natural Moisturizing Factors and HA Surface Hydration Formula. Good Lord, that's a name. Um, I don't like this one very much. Yes, it moisturizes, but it is very thick and I just didn't like the feeling of it on my skin because I felt like it was frankly overkill for what my skin is looking for. I think if you had drier skin, this might be right up your alley, but for me, a lot of it just felt like it just kind of remained on the surface and never really sunk in. I just didn't like the way that like I could just feel it on my skin even like an hour after application. So I, I want something a little bit runnier, I guess. I don't really know what the word is. This one was just a little bit too thick for my personal liking at any rate not a bad product. It didn't like break me out or clog my pores up or do anything like that. It just was too much for what my skin needs, if that makes sense. The last skincare item that I finished up to this point in the project at any rate is from Herbivore. This is the Bacuchiel Retinol Alternative Smoothing Serum and obviously just a deluxe size sample. Again, it's a product that I quite liked I don't think that I would repurchase this in the full size though. And the reason I say that is because it just had a weird texture to it. So when I think serums are typically very runny, almost watery, and this one, like, sometimes when I'd bring like the dropper out of the bottle, like you would see like little strings of product linked from like the bottle to this. So there's something sticky about it. And that stickiness didn't necessarily translate onto my skin. But if we're being completely honest, it kind of skeeved me out just seeing it. So I'm judging it harshly perhaps, but it is what it is. And there are so many serums on the market that if something skeeves me out, I'm probably not gonna repurchase it, right? So this is one that, although it was perfectly fine, I didn't really notice any like amazing benefits to it. It's one that I'm, I'm willing to just leave as a, yeah, I tried it, been there, done that, I'm good kind of products. Okay, along those same lines is this one here from ABH, which is their eye primer. And eh, it was okay. I feel no compulsion whatsoever to buy it. I prefer my paint pot from MAC. This one, I just, it was so light that I had to set it because otherwise it was just like too much of a stark contrast against my skin. And I'm not particularly deep-skinned to begin with, frankly. 
so I think if you're very, very fair, you might really like this, but if you have like a medium skin tone or deeper, this is probably going to be way too light for you. I'm NC20, if I can just label it that way, because most people seem to know what that means, and this was too light for my liking. It did not match my skin tone, so after I applied it, I would use a shadow that kind of matched my skin tone just to sort of blank it out a little bit. I guess it would be great like if you're doing like cut crease work or like what I've got going on here with like the halo look. That could work well for this, but I also don't feel like I need to spend a ton of money in order to achieve that. So, meh, not terrible, not fantastic. And that brings us to our last item for today, and that is from Maybelline. This is the Fit Me Hydrate and Smooth Foundation. I have it in shade 120 Classic Ivory, and I really like this foundation. I think that the hydrate and smooth aspect of it is bang on. It is formulated for normal to dry skin, which checks the box for me. I do have normal, sometimes dryish skin. Uh, it has an SPF of 18. It's not a huge selling point for me. I certainly wouldn't rely on it for sun protection. I don't think that that's going to do an awful lot for you, to be completely honest. It's a nice little addition, but don't buy it specifically because it has SPF in it. Um, but what I like about it is that it just looks like skin. Like, it doesn't get cakey on me. It doesn't, like, overly crease up. Most foundations are going to like separate on me throughout this area and you know down around here Especially when I'm at work wearing it because I do wear glasses for the computer um, But overall it does have very good longevity on my skin again. It doesn't look cakey It doesn't feel heavy on my face. I am wearing it today, but it is mixed with another foundation So this isn't like a true representation of it. Uh, I would say that it's a medium coverage Maybe buildable to like medium full. I don't think you're going to get quite to that full unless you're wearing an awful lot of it. But you could also just do it with a very light application and kind of sheer it out a bit. Overall, like I said, I like this foundation. If I was in the market for another drugstore foundation, this is definitely one that I would repurchase. I have a drawer full of foundations. I'm trying not to buy any right now. But if the opportunity arose and I was looking for a good drugstore option, this is the one that I would turn to. All right, so that is the roundup for today. Like I said, I still have another 18 items in this project that I'm continuing to work on. I know that I'm not gonna finish them all. I'm totally happy with that. Frankly, I'm totally happy with what I've accomplished so far. There are other items still remaining that are like this close to being done. So what I plan to do is just do one more finale, sort of a wrap up closer to my birth date, just to let you know what it is that I managed to accomplish. Um, and then decide from there if I'm going to do another project or just kind of take a break. At this moment in time, I think I'm just going to take a break from it and start like rotating through other items. Um, but don't hold me to that because who knows how I'm going to feel in three weeks time. All right, so that is it for today then. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.